Hello and welcome back to our spreader build series. Today we're going to be installing a set of seat swivels in this beautiful red van. And you may have recognized this van from a lot of our travel videos. Uh, this belongs to a good friend of ours. So it tends to accompany us on the most of our long trips. So this van currently has a seat swivel on the passenger side, but none on the driver's side. So we're going to install one on the driver's side, show you how to install the parking brake bracket and deal with that stuff. We're going to remove the seat swivel that's on the passenger side and we're going to replace it with the higher quality scope and mill one. So if you're interested in seat swivels, keep on watching. Here is our seat swivel kit. So this is the Scopema seat swivel from the swivel shop. And it comes with the mounting hardware to mount the swivel to the seat pedestal. And it also comes with a bracket and hardware to lower the parking brake handle. And this kit is specific to the Sprinter, but they also make this kit for other vans. Okay, before we begin, we want to disconnect the 12 volt power source. Down by the throttle on the Sprinter vans, there's a post and you push the red clip and release it and that will disconnect the electrical system. And there's a note here about waiting 10 minutes after you turn off the engine before you disconnect it. We're gonna begin by removing the four bolts that hold the seat to the pedestal. So here, here, and on the back of the seat. And we are using a 7 16 socket. Alright, now that we have the seat disconnected, we don't want to slide it forward or back because then the tracks will be misaligned. And then we'll have a number of connectors to undo. Some of these are seat airbags. Uh, in the case of this van, they're seat heaters. So we want to disconnect these and we want to make sure that we reconnect them before we start the vehicle. Don't start the vehicle with them disconnected. Now we want to disconnect the seat, lower seatbelt harness from the seat itself using a T50 Torx. And now you can lift the seat out. Okay, we're going to bring the seat swivel in and you're going to put the orange handle toward the parking brake and align it with the holes in the pedestal. And then swivel the pedestal a little bit so you can gain access to the mounting holes. And then use the supplied hardware to bolt the seat swivel in place. And using a number six Allen head, we're going to tighten down the bolts. like about this already is that when it's locked in place there is no slop it is nice and solid on the driver's side we will need to install this parking brake lowering bracket and that's because the parking brake is higher than the pedestal the pedestal when it swivels would contact this and there's a lot of different options in these vans that make the floor height different so this particular van has the rear heat duct which raises the floor higher than say my van that doesn't have it but we'll have to remove this plastic case and there are a couple of bolts in here that attach it to this bracket that's attached to the pedestal and we'll remove it add the lowering bracket and then of course we're going to have to trim the plastic because in lowering this it's going to make it contact the floor now, in order to do the parking brake 
relocation, we need to remove the plastic cover from the handbrake itself. And there's this little plastic clip that retains it in a hole. So this is what you're working with, is releasing by rocking this off, releasing this clip from this hole. And then the, the back half of the handle will release. With the plastic handle remove, we're gonna use a 16 millimeter socket to remove the mounting bolts. Now we're gonna use this nicely machined plate with the countersunk holes and some matching hardware. And this will provide the lowering bracket for the handbrake. Now the plate, backing plate gets installed on the back of the handle and there's new hardware included because the original handbrake hardware would be too long to use here. So this allows, with the backing plate, we can bolt it up to our lowering bracket. At this point, the plastic skirt needs to be trimmed. You can see with it in place, it's contacting the floor. So we will trim the bottom so that we don't have that contact. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's different floor options in these vans, and this particular one has the raised floor because of the heater. But in the case of this van, it looks like we're gonna have to cut about a half an inch off the plastic here, and that's because there's about a half an inch between the hole here that retains that little plastic clip up in there. And we're also going to have to do just a very small amount of trimming on the inside because the inside of the handle will touch right there. Now for this van, this is the amount of trimming we're going to make. So this is toward the front of the parking brake handle and it doesn't really come in contact with the floor. So we're going to make a radius cut. Most of the amount of material needs to be removed between about here and here. So we're taking 3 eighths to a half an inch off all around. There's a lot of different options for trimming this down. You can use something as simple as a hacksaw blade. Uh, oscillating tool also works really well. And in this case, we're gonna use a little air-powered body saw. You can fix a lot with sandpaper. So if you end up with a little bit of a hacky cut through here, a little bit of sandpaper can go a long ways. After a little touch up with the sander, that is our final product. We've trimmed the lower part of the seat base and this is where we have a little bit of contact on the inside of the handle. So we need to do a little bit more trimming here. And the trimming you do here won't be very noticeable. It's on the inside of the seat. We have the handle trimmed down. Now just line it up in the front with the lip and push it into place. We're ready to mount the seat swivel. So before you attempt to install the seat, you want to rotate it a little bit 
and the bottoms of these are countersunk so that the bolt will come up through and then we can drop the seat on the top. Before we can mount the seat, we also have to trim these plastic sides and that's because the plastic sides overhang the pedestal so it will not rotate if that's the case. So one thing you want to keep in mind, at least on the sprinter seats, you want to lower the seats all the way down to the bottom. And as you can see right now, the seat would not swivel. This has a, another kind of seat swivel that we're actually going to remove and replace it with the ones we just got. So we need to measure the height of the swivel with the seat all the way down to know where to cut this. And that height is from the top of this bolt because that's what sits up the highest on these seat swivels from there to the top of the plate because this is where the seat's going to rest. And that measurement is 11 sixteenths. So we want to trim it so that that plastic skirt is only 11 sixteenths or less off of the mounting surface. Right now that plastic skirt sits about down here. We measured 11 sixteenths from the seat base marked 11 16 on the plastic and by the time that we cut it and sand it we'll have enough play but you only need to do this if you plan on running your seats all the way down because they're ever using it in the all the way down position you really don't want to have to jack the seat up in order to swivel it okay now use your tool of choice to trim the plastic So the cutoff piece is about one and five eighths inches tall. Now with the seat in place, the seat is lightly resting on the handle. So if you run your seat in the lowest position, you may want to cut a notch here so the seat can, or the lever can slide forward and back. In this case, the owner of the van is not planning on running the seat all the way down. So we are choosing not to notch it, but yeah, it looks like you would need to notch maybe a quarter inch or maybe just a little bit more to allow movement of that lever if you run your seat all the way down. When you go to drop the seat in, there are some pins in the factory seats and they have to align with some slots in the seat swivel. So be sure before you bolt it down through the holes that you have it, these pins in the recesses of the swivel. Okay, with the seat in place, all you have to do is put the countersunk bolts in from the bottom and push it up through the seat rail and put the nut on top. Now the new seat hardware, there, the bottom of the seat swivel is countersunk. So install the bolts from the bottom side up and put the nut on top. And that goes for all four corners. And just like before, we have to swivel the seat in order to get access to install that hardware. Final step is to install a lower seat belt mount into the seat. To use the swivel seat, we go ahead and drop the parking brake, pull the lever back, and spin it around. Compared to another brand seat swivel on this particular seat, you have to move the seat back to access the swivel pin. You pull it up, slightly swivel the seat, then you can put the seat, have to put the seat all the way forward to swivel it around. And quite frankly, it's a little rough and it often squeaks, but for some reason it's not squeaking right now. And then once you swivel it around, the pen drops off the backside 
and then you have to put the seat back where you want it and then when you go to move the seat again you have to lift start the seat swiveling let it down then move the seat all the way forward so that's one thing that's not great about this other brand seat swivel And to use the Scopoma swivel, you simply pull the lever back, spin it around, and in order to clear the steering wheel, you do need to move the seat forward a little bit. You're good to go. Another nice thing about the Scopoma swivel is that it's only 7 8 of an inch tall, so it's not increasing the height of your seat by much. And some other brand is about 1 and 5 8 inches tall, so a much taller seat swivel. All right, head on over to rcaravan.com, and we've got an entire write-up on installing the seat swivels. And we also have some links set up where you can click to buy the seat swivels from a reputable place. And if you haven't seen our website, we have a whole web page dedicated to showing you how to build a beautiful van. So as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. Bye.